Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all grinding away trying to get those keys so we can start that first raid as soon as possible. In this video, I'm going to go through my strategy of building up your teams to get ready for this raid, just so that you're not overspending on your resources and hopefully focusing on the right characters. But speaking of the right characters, if you're looking for that ultimate team that's going to help you dominate the raid, just so you know, nobody is really going to know that until we can actually get our hands on the raid. There are a lot of theories going around out there of what characters may or may not work, and that is fantastic. It's good to try different combinations, but until we 100% know that those combinations work, don't start investing in some of those characters just in case it turns out that those theories were incorrect and you've wasted all those resources on the wrong characters. So what I am going to go through is what team you should focus on to start with, how to build that second, third, fourth and fifth team. So what we're going to need first and foremost is 25 characters that we can work with for those five attempts on the raid. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our collection we're going to sort everything by power, so it gives us a better idea of what characters we've already worked on that we can start building these teams around. Now most people are probably going to be looking at their arena team as what they've done the most amount of work on, since that's where you really put a lot of resources to claim those better rewards daily. So depending on what team you do use in the arena, that could work to your advantage, it may be a slight disadvantage. Our second and third team are probably going to be a collection of what we've been using to do our chapter missions for both Light and Shadow, and possibly a few others that we've thrown in there so that we can complete some of our challenges. To round out the 25 characters, you may also have some that you've been leveling up for some of the legendary events. You may also have a few characters that you started working on at different stages while you were waiting to unlock other characters. That's all great because we do need those 25 characters just to put some scores on the board. Now, if you are free to play, you're probably going to be looking at this page and thinking that you're not really impressed by what you do see. And that is perfectly okay because you just need a point to start building from. So if I have a look at my current roster, obviously I've got my elves there that are my current arena team. Then I will have the bog team that I had prior to that as my previous arena team. Other than that, I don't really have a real cohesive amount of characters that I've got. Some are slightly built up, which is a good place to start. Quite a few of them are at gear level five. So I will have something to be able to post scores with. But since unlocking Elrond, all of my resources have been going into the Elves. I have developed quite a lot of the abilities up as well. So even some of the gear levels that look a little bit low here, I am slowly chipping away at that. I'm doing everything free to play at the moment. I have not spent any money on this game since the Elodin Marquee event. So I'm definitely in the free to play grind with the rest of you guys, just so we can really start to put something together and find out how difficult it is for you guys to build up this roster. And hopefully these next few tips are really going to help you build up some strong teams. So if we start with our main team, for me, it is definitely going to be the elves. The reason that I am picking the elves as my best team, first of all, you're looking at AOE damage. You do have that from both Elodin and Elrond. You've got some really good single damage characters from Lomian and Elrahir. Then you've also got survivability from both Elrond and Arwen, and Elodin also helps protect some of those guys. So therefore, they're gonna be able to stay in the fight just that little bit longer. Some other teams that you may want to consider, obviously Isengard are going to be another good one. And there's nothing wrong with slotting Gaza into that team because we all know how effective he is as far as AoE damage is concerned. Another team, Rohan, could be another decent team to have there. Their synergy is really good. They get a lot of counterattacks. Therefore, you might be able to take out a few of those Orcs and get those bonus points 
without even having to have your own attack. Another team that you probably would consider, which you might have already been investing in, is the Road to Rivendell team. As you know, once they have got quite a substantial amount of gear and abilities built up, they are a pretty solid team and can survive quite a while in battle. Now, the thing that we want with our main team is to be working towards that top tier of the raid. Now, tier five, it's recommending that you have 55,000 power for that team. Now, you're probably going to be looking at a lot of people in your guild, and they're going to have 55,000 or less for their entire collection, let alone for one team. So as you start to build that up, that's just going to be your goal. Where you really want to be starting is bare minimum tier 3. Hopefully you can slot into tier 4 just to get some extra rewards out of it, depending on how well developed your team is. Now you've got to remember that the whole purpose of these raids is to get points. So if you're trying to bite off a little bit more than you can chew, thinking you can tackle tier 5 and you get demolished really, really quickly, that's not really going to help you when you could have just dropped back a tier and gotten a lot more points for yourself and for the guild. But for the time being, you really want to keep pushing that top team as far as you can to get into tier 5 of the raid so you can really take advantage of those big point rewards. Now for teams number 2 and 3, depending on how far apart they might be, you may be starting out at around about tier 2, but you want to be aiming to be getting them into that tier 3. Mainly because you, they're the ones that are just going to buff up that score just that little bit more so you can get those higher tier rewards. Now there is going to be a real temptation to look at them and say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to bump these guys all the way up to level 60. I'm going to start throwing some gear on them as well. I'm going to try and build up five teams all at once. First of all, you're not going to have the resources to do that. And you're going to end up with a lot of these characters that just aren't really raid ready. We don't know what the best teams are just yet. So for the time being, get that one team up and running and you can slowly start to work on number two and number three just to get those extra rewards. Just remember that this raid is not a one-time only thing. We're going to be playing this every week for the next who knows how long. So you're going to be able to build these things up over time. And the other thing you've got to take into account is that these raid rewards, you will be able to reinvest into your roster and start building up some of those other characters. So there's plenty of time to get onto that. Now moving on to team number four. Now this could be possibly your most important team because what's gonna happen after the first say two or three raids, we're gonna have a lot of the players that have been investing a lot of money into the game and developing a lot of different characters, which for some reason will just really work with this chapter of the raid. Now that's where you're going to start developing a really good raid team. You may already have some of these characters, there may be some that you'll have to grind out and start working on, but that's going to be your little development team. So you're probably going to start by putting that into tier 1 and slowly building that up towards that top tier. That will no doubt overtake your top tier team at some point throughout the raid and that's perfectly fine because that other team that you've already got developed there that could be in tier 5 by that time so you're going to have two teams in tier 5. Now we move on to our last team. This is the team that is pretty much the dregs of your roster so ones that have fallen out of favor with your farming ones that you just don't use that much anymore. Maybe you were looking at them for the raid, they didn't quite work out, so they start to slip back again. That is fine, just use whatever you have for the time being. In tier five, get whatever points you can. Because what's gonna happen in around about a month's time is we're gonna get chapter two of the raid, and then we're going to have a completely different team that might dominate that chapter and everything that we've done in tier one is no longer really relevant. So that number five team is going to be where you start to develop your chapter two team. 
Now with any luck, these are going to be characters that you've already started to work on, so it may not be that big a deal, but just in case, you want to have that little bit of a buffer so that you're not trying to work on too many characters at one time. Even trying to build five teams is extremely difficult, especially as free-to-play. Hopefully the rewards that we get from these raids are going to really accelerate what we can do as far as building up our characters are concerned, but we just don't know yet until we start getting some of those rewards in our hands. Now as soon as we do get more information on what teams are working from what everyone has been trying out there in the community, I will definitely be bringing you guys videos on how to assemble those teams, the best way to farm them, and what abilities that you should be focusing on first, just so that you're going to get the most out of your raid teams and really start to dominate that first chapter of the raid. And then as we get into the other chapters, Hopefully we've set ourselves up really well so that we don't have too much farming to do once we eventually get to take on the Balrog. Now we also have to remember that over the next four months as we're getting those extra chapters into the game, we will be getting other characters that join us along the way that may end up being really, really good for various chapters of the game. So we want to be able to leave just that little bit of wiggle room, not burn all of our resources on all of these characters that we just don't know yet if they're going to be good or not. So just focus on that main team for the time being until we get that little bit more information in our hands. Now I'd also love to hear from you guys if you've been theory crafting what teams you think are going to be able to take on this first chapter of the raid. It'd be good to get a few ideas just so that the community might be able to work on a couple of things. And then also once we do get that first chapter of the raid done, let me know what your scores were and what did or didn't work for you. It's just really good information to have just to help other players out just in case they're a little bit confused on where they really should put their focus into. But that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget, like and sub, you know the deal. We've got plenty more Heroes of Middle-Earth coming your way. Don't miss out, and we'll catch you in the next one.